Hello friends, this is Grawl. In this series, I start with a brand new character in World of Warcraft. No previous achievements, no gold, no anything. Fresh at max level with no connections to see how far I can go. The one catch, I recorded every single minute of the journey and I explained my thought process and decision making along the way. Whether you're just looking to improve your skills and pug your way up, or you just want to come along for the ride, I hope you guys enjoy. Here we are. The 11 Plague Fall got us, but we continue on. There's nothing more to do, but just to go back in and go again. What if we take these two guys? What if we take these two guys and then we wait and see who else, uh, see who else wants the game? So when you're looking for players, you have a mix of, you know, really the only two things you can see, I mean, besides their class, is their item level and their rating. And I think both are reasonably important. But if you ask me, I actually feel like rating is more important than item level. Can 500 rating make up a gap of 15 item level or whatever? I don't know. That's a little tough. But generally speaking, experience in Mythic Plus goes a long way. And having someone who has gear doesn't necessarily mean they know what's going on. You know, someone could have just like somehow snuck into a raid clear or is a PvPer and has decent gear, but... Uh, doesn't actually know what's going on. Ooh, a warlock with 237. Okay. I kind of wanted, didn't want to have three melees anyway. Generally speaking, also with DPS and finding people for your group, a lot of people watching might get mauled, but there are just so many more DPS than there are tanks and healers, so you can be a little bit picky, you know? Like, is it, is it true that some of these guys, like, his nuts and Galvum or whatever Vorthamon can do a 10 plague fall. Absolutely. I'm not doubting their ability to do a plague fall whatsoever. But why take them when I can wait two minutes and find someone who is, you know, a slightly higher success rate? Let's see. If I were you at this point, I would definitely recommend start souping up your, your UI and your add-ons and stuff. You know, we could we could design a little bit better weak auras and start using better stuff for Mythic Plus, and uh, be using the Raider IO add-on in the website so we can look people up to see like are they raiding or whatever. It right, looks like we'll have to settle for our boy Winnie Moo, two twenty five, twelve fifty. This is plenty. I think this is more than settling. Bam. Pass and lead to the tank, and here we go, round two. 209 Resto Shaman versus Plaguefall. We'll pre Earth Shield our tank because things got a little scary last time. Let's see what this tank decides to do. This Warlock just runs head first into this pack. Oh no. Maybe he wanted to attack. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. We'll start with a Healing Tide. As we know there's going to be real heavy damage. We fought this pack before. We also have a Fae Transfusion banked up. Nice. Things aren't going so bad. Nice. Alright. So see, when you kill stuff quickly, things get better. But one thing you'll find in dungeon groups is that... If your DPS is pulling stuff instead of the tank, a lot of times the tank doesn't really like that. You have to be a little careful with that. Use a cap totem to stop this fungi storm. We won't get much of it, but we can reduce a little bit of the damage. I think I turned off my tormented like auto selector thing, so hopefully we can look at the powers a little bit. Alright, things looking much more smoothly than last run. We got four mobs here with one inspired in, so I'm kind of going to prepare for some damage. Make sure our cloud burst is up and we have a rain on the ground. This swirly looks scary. We're going to walk away from here. We'll interrupt this wonder grow since it's basically the only thing we can interrupt. Since it's quaking, we gotta walk off of our warlock friend. He's probably blasting. Oh, 
I'm using my purge to remove this buff off the mushrooms. It's not a super big deal, but it can help reduce some of the damage. All right, here we go. We're fighting the incinerator. I'm going to be patient and save my kick. In case our, uh, our team isn't ready to kick something, but it looks like they're doing all right for now. Waking can be a bit scary when you got to do some big AoE heals. And uh, I could have popped my Ascendance there, but I was pretty confident. One thing that's nice about an encounter like that is that, you know, the damage is very consistent. You know what's going to come in. So our options are essentially like splashing damage and healing, a critical or mastery buff or haste. But the haste does damage to us. And even though the haste does damage to us, 12% haste is really, really nice gonna be the biggest stat bonus we can get out of any of the options so we're gonna grab the haste seems like everything's going pretty swimmingly here much much better than last time but we'll see what happens when we get to the boss but so far so good Our tank seems to be going pretty quick, moving from pack to pack. This guy has a big frontal, so you kind of got to watch out for him. I don't know if it's too dangerous. At this level, but... We'll use our cap totem to stun these uh, blobs. These little guys and the boss, we gotta keep trying to stun the blobs so that they don't reach them. Because it, uh, I don't know if it just heals them or it improves their max HP. It does something that we don't want to happen, so. Use our slow totem again there. Alright, so we can, seem to be going at a decent pace. We'll pop our bloodlust here. What happened there? My fate transfusion just like cancelled. I didn't get any damage or healing out of it. That's very unfortunate. We'll get out of this cone here. Try and navigate back to my uh the field of blossoms. Now we have a warlock that can actually banish these and a monk that can para and both of the paladins can use turn evil. We have lots of different ways we can stop this. We'll drop a healing tide now that our lust is starting to fade. Running a little low on juice. This boss is dying much quicker. Much quicker than last time. Warlock we picked up is doing some nice damage. I used my my soul shape ability just to negate that knockback and then I can get back in and pump some heals. I'm using healing wave to be a little bit more mana conscious. Mainly because I got some PTSD from the last dungeon with how long this fight lasted, but realistically, I shouldn't have to do that. But it can be a good habit when you're, you know, you're not sure of the boss length or the fight length or whatever to just be a little bit mana conscious at the start for a little while. You don't necessarily know how long it's going to go. And here we go, running into this stuff. Making much better time than the last run so far. 
Is my fate transfusion gonna cancel again? Huh. Maybe it was me. I swear I didn't do anything, but... These guys, these guys are running away, so we'll frost shock them. Oh boy, this is running into that pack. Looks like we got lucky and it didn't pull, though. Now it's taking the long way around. How nice of them. We're blasting. These two mobs don't do hardly anything. Essentially just tank damage, so... We can DPS as long as the tank's healthy. Unfortunately, again, we can't remove any diseases, but it looks like our tank is removing them. And here's our red slime friend and the inspiring again. So we won't be able to kick him. We'll just use our ruby for a little bit of extra healing. Oh, dang. That guy got destroyed. When we do have a necrolord. I don't, oh no, our Monk. Okay, so Monk usually plays Necrolord. I actually, in every single group that I've played in so far, I haven't put any effort to like try and make sure we have the right Covenant for the Covenant buff, but that's probably a very good idea. Generally speaking, I'm sort of just taking whoever I can get. Everyone kind of used their kicks, so I'll throw down a, a Cap Totem there just to stun these guys. These guys can do a lot of damage to melee, and we have uh, two melee DPS. And what looks like a melee warlock. Alright, moving along. We'll save our Fade Transfusion for the next pack, but we're kind of falling behind, so... We'll use Healing Tide. Healing Tide is just a really good sort of like first responder cooldown. It's not super powerful and it's not great in emergencies, so you shouldn't really feel like you have to hold on to it for any reason. You know, anytime you fall behind, you just throw down that healing tide. And it just uh, boosts healing a little bit. Oh gosh. We're pulling big here. I'm gonna use our soul shape to get out of the way of that frontal. Gonna dispel our tank, but there's two different routes. Oh boy, we got a we got a big pack coming. We're getting ready for some big heals. We got our Field of Blossoms down and our Fade Transfusion. We're getting ready to press Ascendance, too. We haven't pressed it yet, but I think we're going to do it here. We'll press our Defensive, because it looks like we're getting hit by that guy. Our tank's probably running out of juice at this point. I don't think he planned on pulling this. Now, technically, the Red Paladin and the Monk can dispel themselves from this disease. So I'm not worried too much about topping them. If they end up, uh, uh oh, we battle res that guy. Gotta be careful about using battle reses. One thing I noticed, I don't know if groups are not fully paying attention or uh, they don't know exactly, but very often I'm seeing groups use their battle reses. But this is part of the reason that you, it's so easy to wipe to a tyrannical boss because you have, if you just waste your battle reses and then you don't have them for when people die on the boss mechanics, it can be really scary. But anyway, as I was saying, um, in a situation like that, you know, it's very important that you keep the tank topped and you heal the tank. And, you know, while our DPS died, that's okay, you know, nothing nothing wrong happened. If a DPS dies, like, later on in a pull when things are basically already cleaned up, it's not the end of the world. Especially considering he could have saved himself. Okay, so let's look at our powers. You can eat food faster, melee attack stun, or movement speed. So we take movement speed here. Although the other two can be fun. That power doesn't matter so much. But yeah, in that situation, I'm always just going to prioritize the tank. The two most important lives when you're... Uh oh. I'm going to give this guy some healing. Alright, he got dispelled. Nice. 
the two most important lives are your own and the tanks and when it comes to you know scary situations you just have to immediately prioritize them over all else if you have to Oh, this tentacle keeps grabbing people. You can stun this tentacle and it stops them from grabbing you, or you can uh, dispel this disease. I think I'll be able to res here. And I, I think I can res. I think I'm in combat right now, but as soon as these bombs blow up, yeah, I can res here. So I can use my, my solo res and not have to battle res. very good on our red paladin friend not to uh release because we're pretty far away from a checkpoint at this point we'll kick this guy this guy kind of has a lot of health it's really good to use the bombs that he spawns if you can kill him but we were kind of behind a little bit so Either way, no complaints. Making good time. So once you clear one of these packs, this boss will start jumping around the room. So you have to be careful where you fight all this stuff. This will jump from all the all four of these platforms here. That's why our tank is kind of pulling this one back. However, you can clear one pack really quick. You see, the boss won't start jumping until you until you clear that one pack. But now that that pack's gone, he's going to start running around the room. This part can actually be pretty healing intensive. We're going to put down a rain and use our personal there. And with this inspiring, it makes it really, really annoying to deal with these caster mobs. But we prevail. Your monk grabs the buff. So now we didn't go straight for the uh, the tormentor power this time. We we cleared the room normally. But we do have that tormentor power up there. Generally speaking, most pug groups I've seen will run towards the tormentor and then run back, but I don't necessarily mind this either because it's a little less backtracking. Push these slimes and run up here. Ooh, our tank pulled the boss. Looks like maybe our tank forgot about the Tormentor or just didn't want to go for him. Hopefully our team notices. Once the boss jumps to the next platform is when I'm going to use my Bloodlust. So that's when the uh, the mechanics sort of start. The very beginning of this boss, he doesn't do too much. All right, so we'll run over here. We'll pop our bloodlust. Now we gotta kill this bomb. So where we went wrong last time is we have to kill this bomb, but this slime right here gives an aura that reduces the damage of everything around it. And so it's really important that the tank sort of stays away from the bomb and keeps the boss and the slime busy while all the DPS deal with the bomb. And if the tank ends up running that slime over there and giving that damage reduction aura to the bomb, Two, 
uh, becomes very, very difficult to kill. I probably should have waited on that Fae Transfusion, because now my Field of Blossom is all the way over there. See, like here, our slime is on top of the bomb. It was on top of the bomb for quite some time, but luckily our rep paladin was a. Uh, or our monk actually blew it up. And it looks like we are home free. than halfway through the dungeon at this point and I feel like most of the hard stuff is out of the way most of the hard stuff is out of the way I'm not too worried we have to do some healing here actually we'll put down our healing tide we have a lot of cooldowns ready use ascendance too just because this guy has an aura that reduces the healing that you do by 50% and so it can be really hard to push those health bars up you kind of got to use a lot more than you'd expect he targets me with the charge so I back away and I also use my astral shift damage reduction is really really important on this guy because although healing is reduced you know damage reduction is still at full potential okay so I can get either mastery or crit mana or uh some like healing sort of thing i'm gonna take the, the i think it's crit that i'll have and I'm, I'm not too worried about mana so far our team seems to have pretty good dps so all the bosses are dying at a pretty good pace i won't have to worry about my mana too much gotta start dropping cap totem to stop these tentacles Basically, the tentacle will grab somebody and you have to stun it. I'm going to put my focus on the sniper over there. I think he summons a spider that I want to stop. We're taking care of this stuff pretty quick, actually. like tank got quaked a little bit sometimes it could, quaking can be a little bit stressful on the tank because you know the dps are on his head trying to do damage but the tank is trying to live and he does not want to get quaked so it's always like a situation do you want to move out of the way or not all right so here's the fourth and last mini boss this guy will give us some defensive options that'll be nice for the last boss Now you can see if you don't stand, if you stand into that swirly, it'll stun you. Our paladin getting a little bit greedy with his wings, ended up having to bop himself. Oh, unlucky. Now let's look at our powers here. Increases all self-healing. Upon entering combat, you dodge two attacks, shield you for 20% maximum health. I think the shield is a good default choice. Just sort of a set and forget option. So I kind of fell behind my team. They're all rushing ahead, so I'm going to... Uh-oh, I pulled the spider, too. Oh, no. I didn't mean to pull that spider. I, was, I didn't think they snuck by it. So things aren't going great. We can drop our healing tide and our cloud burst. Uh-oh. 
I'm gonna drop Spirit Link too because we had a little bit of a quaking emergency. Our, someone looks like he's stopping those ones. I'd use the Cap Totem to stop some other ones. Things still keep not going great, so I'll use my Ascendance as well. You know, anytime if you use your cooldowns and things are still not going well, don't be afraid to just keep sending them, you know? Because you can see how long you can go without using cooldowns. Try and get a Fade Transfusion off. We also still have our Warlock Health Stones too. We're definitely not in the habit of using those effectively. But we don't have Mage Food. So we gotta put this back. our cap totem hopefully it's not too late I think we stun him just in time all right this boss room can be one of the scarier ones to clear I'd say the very beginning leading up to the first boss and then this boss room are kind of the two tough areas for trash mobs at least. Oh, we gotta get near our friends. Okay, I'm targeted with this, so I'm gonna use my astral shift. I gotta run back to my friends as quick as I can. Got a lot of movement here, so we'll use our spirit walkers. Just keep pumping the tank with heals. It can be hard on the tank if the tank has to get all of them. If you ever have any, like, ground effects or anything you can use to break these little guys out, it can help the tank out a lot. See, so yeah, it looks like we're doing a little bit more of a group effort here. I'll even walk in here and get these. Or I won't get them. I guess I have no damage or whatever. <laughs> guess you need to do damage to break them out. Used to being able to go in there as a holy paladin and pressing consecrate. Boss is kind of scary. Especially considering we, we don't have our bloodlust. Uh oh, our friend got webbed in. We'll use our ruby just for a little bit of extra healing and we'll come on top of our friend here since he's stunned out. Our tank's managing everything pretty well. A little tough on him, but... I feel like having a Destro lock just makes everything more chaotic. Like, the whole time you just see, like, all these infernals and fire raining down from the sky, even though it's someone from our team. care of that boss one more to go man is looking decent oh man our prop paladin's even uh, off healing me on the way down what a nice guy uh oh our dps uh we're ready to attack I think we're not quite on pace to get a plus two here. It was definitely a really smooth run. Maybe if everything would have been perfect, we could have gotten a plus two, but I'm not going to complain. If we time the key, I'm happy with that. Oh. 
Look at this monk. He's just like, he's just done with this stuff over here. He's like, I'm gonna go fight this stuff over here. This guy's crazy. Mm, maybe maybe there's a chance maybe there's a chance I don't know what the the plus two timer is I think it's like seven minutes and something I think we're just a little bit too slow for that but one can dream So generally speaking, we usually lost the second phase of the three. And I'm just going to kind of hold on to it, but... If someone says lust, I might just send it. Although I'm reasonably competent, uh, confident healing through this stuff. So now we actually get to see the mechanics of this boss. So this boss does this infectious rain that just does damage to basically everyone in your group. We need to have some big healing prepared for each one. That first one, I dropped my healing tide. This one, I'm going to use my Fey Transfusion. Then hopefully the boss should be phased by then. Put down a healing rain beforehand. This thing hurts when I don't have my Astral Shift or any sort of defensives. Luckily, three of our party members can dispel that rain if they want to. Uh-oh, my team is under attack by tentacles. We do have a battle res on the warlock, though, so as long as our... As long as our warlock can stay alive, we should be okay. Waiting for our warlock to res our friend. Res our friend. Maybe he doesn't realize. Or maybe he's DC'd. Okay, there. Now we can bloodlust. I just wanted to make sure we got our uh, fifth guy up before I bloodlusted. Now, I'm not going to use too much uh, too much big big spells here, because we do have bloodlust. So this really big uh, haste buff will help me a lot healing. And yeah, it looks like the tank dispelled me, too. I, th I would guess the tank dispelled me. So our, tank is, our tank played very well this run. Sometimes you get lucky, you know, you wait in group finder and you can't find a single guy, but the one guy that does apply does really well. I'm going to use an Earth Ellie here just to kind of uh, maybe absorb some of the threat of these guys. Sometimes it can be hard for the tank to pick him up because he needs to be tanking the boss. So right away when this boss comes out, there's going to be another uh, phase. I'm going to be ready with my Astral Shift and my Ascendance. Do some big healing, and then hopefully the boss should be dead pretty soon. This where this is where things get a little spicy. However, there's no tank ads, so in the first two phases it spawns tank ads that are beating up the tank. So you're kind of on a timer because the tank can only live for so long. But in this phase, it's just about dodging, and uh, I think we should be good. We did it. Keystone Conqueror. Our Red Paladin actually got Keystone Conqueror too. My first plus 10. We did it. We timed a plus 10. Oh, and we got a ring. Crit Haste 129. Let's go. This is big. This is a big ring for us. We only got the plus one and we got the theater. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ping the, the theater in chat. Maybe these guys want to go again. I don't know. This Rep Paladin didn't do very much damage. Sometimes you want to play again with the group, but you have the one guy that does tank damage. And so you're like, eh, like, hey, do you guys want to go again except for the Rep Paladin? <laughs> Maybe that's toxic. But hey, if, you, if you do less than tank damage, find an auction house and see if we can sell these boots. Someone gave us these boots. 5,000 gold. I'm gonna put him at 4999. That'll be a nice chunk of gold. Oh, this guy seems pretty high level. Let's invite him. This guy's 232, 1245. We can grab him. This mage is 1181. Maybe we just grab him. 
Gala Blast. Okay, so now that we have Shadowlands Engineering, we get this toy called the Wormhole. This will let us teleport around the map easier. We got a Warlock. 233. He has a 17 theater done? Alright, sounds good to me. Alright, let's roll. I guess I'll just show off the Wormhole anyway, since... So this is an item you get. You don't have to level up your engineering at all. All you have to do is learn level 1 engineering. Why is this guy... F man... So it lets you teleport to any area, and there's predetermined like spots that you go to in, in each area. And so you can see it lets me like come right here, and then it's actually pretty close to this dungeon. So we can use our wormhole to get to this dungeon pretty quickly. All right, our next plus 10, plus 11 theater. If we can string these together, even if we deplete half of them, even if we go like 10, 11, 10, 11, you know, we can still get a lot of score and a lot of decent gear from it. So this first part of theater can be a little bit scary. And here we go. Will we time our second plus 10? Theater of pain plus 11, actually. So this first area can be really, really tough on tanks. So I'm, I'm already mentally preparing for what's going to go down here, depending on what our tank pulls. The one thing I realize is we don't have a soothe. We don't have a soothe to stop this uh this guy so this the healing this part might be a little bit scary we'll see what we can do though either way we're gonna be ready to do some aoe healing put down healing rain cloud burst and healing tide just because i know there's gonna be some aoe damage that's not too bad that's not bad at all Even throw in the rare chain heal. So, a little bit about blood decays. A lot of healers are a bit intimidated healing blood decays. So, the way blood decay works is they take damage. And depending on the amount of damage they take, they use an ability called Death Strike that recovers some of that life back. And their resource that they need to cast Death Strike is called Runic Power. And you can see one of my few weak words that I have here is a tracker for Runic Power. So I can see how much my tank has. Okay, our tank is getting hurt pretty bad here, so I'm gonna drop a Spirit Link just to help him recover some of his Runic Power a little bit. Searing Death goes out on me, so I'm going to press my Astral Shift. Yeah, unfortunately, this will be the hard part of the dungeon because we don't have a Soothe. We're going to need to break this guy's shield. Oh, I didn't use my Fey Transfusion. Pretty big mistake. Our Shaman is just getting absolutely blasted. I'm going to use a Hex on this guy try and break him free use ascendance as well but we have a ruby left over forgot to use that which will come in handy here i'm kicking one of the one of the casters it seems like throughout the entire fight our tank has not had aggro on this caster so this one caster here has just been chasing around our mage for the entire fight maybe he just doesn't notice or Oh no. Things aren't going super swimmingly here. Can we use our cap totem to free out our warlock friend? We're burning through our mana pretty quick. Can use our mana tide here. Just to recover some, although I think we'll be fine. Realistically, I probably sh should have used my mana tide a little bit earlier. You know, you want to be proactive with it. You don't want to be in the situation where you have zero mana and you're waiting on your mana tide. And we made it through. We made it through this part, which feels pretty good. Some of the other bosses will definitely be a challenge, but happy that we made it through this part. 
You can see we did not have very much time to DPS in this in this fight. There was a lot of healing we had to do. So yeah. Blood DK. You need to you want to be able to see their resources because you need to know if they uh if they can heal themselves or if they need help. And you can kind of get an idea of how they're doing based off of their runic power, you know? Like if it looks like they're taking a lot of damage, but they're sitting at, you know, 100, 120 runic power, then they're just sort of milking it a little bit and they can heal up whenever they want. But if they're, you know, falling low, going below like 30 and they don't even have enough to use a heal, then that's when you need to really uh, give them some juice. All right, so here's our first mini boss of the dungeon. It looks like our blood decay doesn't want to fight it. Oh, no, he does. He does. Okay, he was just scouting out the area a little bit. He doesn't seem super familiar with that thing. But that's okay. I'm gonna walk over to our DK here so he doesn't get feared. Our team's doing decent damage, which is nice. As a healer, that's about all you can hope for, you know? Uh oh. I could have put down a Tremor Totem there. Would, would be a good move to do in a situation with Quaking. Because a Tremor Totem will remove that fear from everybody. Um, let's take the Mana Orbs this time. I'm not as confident as what's going to happen in this dungeon. I might be worried about Mana, so... I'll take the Mana Orbs here. Somehow we get lucky again and we have the right covenant, even though I didn't really ask anybody. I'm going to drop a spirit link here at the door because things seem to be getting a little scary. Looks like our team isn't entirely on the same page. We'll use our Fey Transfusion to try and top everyone up. Generally speaking, the way that you do this area is you don't want to fight... You don't want to fight, uh out here just because of all these swirlies. Mm, so our blood DK didn't take his power from the mini boss. So I don't think our blood DK is familiar with those uh, those tormentors or how they work or anything. So this might be an exciting ride. This is what I would call the more challenging part of the dungeon in Theater of Pain. Lots of really heavy group damage pulls. I'm being really, really greedy here, and I'm not using any of my uh, any of my big cooldowns because I want to save it for what's coming next. It was a little scary, and honestly, I'd probably recommend most people use a cooldown there, but I was pretty confident with health stones and everything that was going on. Oh, boy. Okay, so we're pulling both of these guys. This might get a little bit hectic, and this is kind of what I was worried would happen. Luckily, we have our Ascendants here. This will do a lot of big healing. I'm also watching the uh, the Portal Guardian. Or sorry, the Incinerator in case I need to interrupt. And now that my Ascendants is starting to wear off, I'm going to use my Healing Tide. Use our Fate Transfusion, top everyone. Nice. Alright, that was a little scary, but we handled that very quickly. Okay, let's take the haste power again. Yeah, so it seems our tank isn't familiar with how these guys work. Because he's not picking his power from the, the bosses. It looks like... Someone on our team just ran backwards. Oh, our tank just ran backwards. Okay. And now he's back. Okay, good. Yeah, this, I would say, just after, maybe my sample size is small, but I would say this is definitely the tough part uh, the, of key levels. Once you get to, like, between 10s and 15s, where... You know, this is where the mechanics are going to start to punish you and you're going to start to be needing to do it like to do good damage. This is definitely where uh, we're starting to run into some problems. 
So this is a little scary here. I don't have any cooldowns really. I'm mainly just worried about keeping myself alive. I didn't have Astral Shift or Spirit Link. I do have Spirit Link now, but I think we'll probably end up using it here. It's a little bit unfortunate mistiming. Oh boy, this, this guy is hurting real bad. But we're making it through. And then, yeah, again, this is what I would describe as the hard part. Is these... Saw how many pulls back to back to back were just like crazy AoE damage. I need to really be a little bit stingy. That's one of the few areas where you do kind of need to be stingy with your cooldowns. And not necessarily just send them all out because you'll need them for later. Uh oh, our tank got sent flying. Our tank is having some major uh, aggro problems. I think that caster was just wailing on our poor mage again the whole pull. Luckily we had some good interrupts. This is the last platform and this has got one more of these tornado guys. You have to really watch out that you're not that you're not interrupted by the uh, or that you're not knocked off by the tornado guys. If you get hit by one of the tornadoes, it's essentially over. I'm gonna stop this bone spear and then drop a cap totem just to uh, get any other casts, and we can use our fate transfusion and try and keep people topped. All right. Um, where did our tank go? Our tank seems to have been sent flying. I don't think I can res him. Oh, he is right there. I guess it put his body back here. I've never seen that before. He got sent flying so far that it put his body back on the platform. Which this is very good for us. I was worried that he was going to have to release and run back, but. Alright, so we're on the second boss. Boss is also quite difficult, but our, our damage dealers have been doing pretty well, so let's restock on health stones. We're not forgetting to use our health stones this dungeon. Oh no, the quaking. Uh, our tank is. Choosing not to tank. Okay, there he goes. This this boss can have some pretty heavy damage too. You gotta watch out for the debuffs on this boss. Having good party frames and being able to track who's who's affected with what is very important for this boss. Because it looks like there's lots of random damage going everywhere, but the real lethal damage comes from all the debuffs that go out. We're starting to fall behind here. You guys know what it is. Time for our healing. Good old friend healing time. So we can dispel the debuff on someone else. And then we can use our own Astral Shift to reduce some of the damage. Boss is starting to get low. Usually about this far in, this boss starts to get a little challenging when Lust veers off, so I'm getting ready to press Ascendance. Just gonna do it right here. We got, a, we got a little lucky. It's always good if any of those debuffs goes on your tank, just because they're so much more durable. A Blood Decay especially is super durable compared to, like, you know, a caster or whatever. So if the Blood Decay gets one of the debuffs, it makes things a lot easier. 
Yeah, our DPS is doing very well here, actually. Everyone's doing pretty nice damage, and everyone's doing the mechanics. This is a rare sight. Nice. So we made it through. We have one soul over here that we didn't kill. I don't know if we need to fight it, but I'm just going to trust the tank. Is uh, maybe as good or not good of an idea as that may seem. We're going at an okay pace. <laughs> Looks like our tank is following everyone else. Not the other way around. I think these guys are just hitting our... I can't tell if the tank has aggro or not. Looks like he maybe does. Ideally, the best scenario when you have like ranged mobs and melee mobs is you want to tank the ranged mob or you want to tank the melee mobs on top of the ranged mobs to see this guy isn't going to move right he's just going to sit here and keep shooting and it's hard for the casters to kind of blast everything down they have to choose whether or not they want to hit one guy or the other but if you group them together then you can just kind of uh get them all uh we are going to die this is going to be almost an irrecoverable situation with this mini boss so I think I'm just going to accept my fate. So these are two mobs that you do not want to fight together. And our mage has just immediately left the party. This is quite unfortunate. Looks like uh, even though this key was very well within timed, our run is coming to an end. Our blood decay is uh, very valiantly trying to fight these guys off. I don't know if this is doable. I think this might be the end of the run for us. And everyone is left. Quite unlucky. Well, you guys know what it is. We go again. Yeah, this is definitely the uh, the tough part in like the 10 to 15 area. Once you get to 15s, the tough part becomes getting into the groups. But I think once you get into the groups, they're a lot higher quality. But this like 10 to 15 range is pretty dangerous. It's definitely a little bit of a minefield. This guy is 221, 1261 score. Seems reasonable. We're taking the tank. If we see the tank, we can take. We're taking the tank. Oh, these guys are very high rated. I don't know what they're doing, but. Seems like a reasonable duo to acquire. Now we can just grab a caster real quick. Yeah, I think the lesson of today might be we might need to work a little harder vetting players. I don't mean to, to pick on our tank friend, but it was clear that he had never been into a, a 10 key or higher before. Didn't even know what was going on, so. Oh, we didn't. Uh, I just realized we didn't get our our heroic item oh shoot here's our warlock from last run he actually was playing pretty well so we'll invite him again if he wants to play again okay let's get our quest item come on something big something big pray for me i pray in the comments just so i can get a good item here the cache of sanctum treasures Ooh, this is good. Oh, this is such a big upgrade for me. Oh, man. 184 to 239. We just got three items from that and our first domination socket. And it has high versatility on it. Oh, boy. What a great piece. It's not quite a weapon or like a... But that's definitely a, a very good piece for us. We love to see that. Oh man, things are looking great. I just, I just, I had some, some guy just rage quit out of my key and we depleted it, but oh man, when you get an item, it feels so good. All right, ready, check. Our spirits are lifted. Our motivation is high. It's time to attack. We'll pass lead to the tank. Ooh, our tank's got a food buff and an augment rune and a flask. Oh man. All right, we got this in the bag.
We still don't have a Soothe, but it wasn't too scary last time. Oh boy, our tank's pulling all of it. He's confident. We'll use uh, Spirit Link here just to help some of the damage on the tank as well. A Transfusion. Going to be another burst of damage. I'm going to Healing Tide here. Guess we're blasting away. What's crazy is that our DPS were, was pretty good last run, but I feel like our DPS is even better this time. So we have this really geared warrior playing with his buddy. Ooh, that ding is like a... I think it's like a notification that mobs are on me. I think it's just because like right at the start or something, all the boss was on me. Use our healing rain. We're a little worried about mana since last time. This time we'll use our we'll use our uh, mana tide totem real early. Oops, that was a mistake. And we gotta juice our tank here. We're gonna spirit walkers because we need to move over them to use our ascendants. We're actually focusing down the caster, which is kind of crazy. One of the bosses is going to be dead already. I don't know if that's the secret sauce or what, but... It should be quite a bit easier now. Uh-oh. Our poor warlock... He was being chased by the boss, and the the stun went out and got him. This is very hectic. Our demon hunter is running for his life. In hindsight, uh, if we're doing this dungeon at a, a difficult level, we definitely want to have a soothe. Want to make sure we grab like a druid or something. Although our you know our options are kind of limited. Use our hex to stop that guy. Our tank is playing pretty well, actually. He, he, our tank's been stopping those guys. And we are completely out of mana, but I think that'll be okay. I think we'll be, uh, we'll manage to live. Scary stuff. Oh, I should have got mage food from that mage before he, uh, left. I'm down to half of my drinks that I got for my like starting my character or whatever. Not that these are expensive in any way. I think they're like one gold. I <laughs> click off our slow fall every time here. Alright, a little bit more decisive this time going towards the mini boss. I'm gonna stand on top of the warlock here. So that we don't get feared. Starting to fall behind a little bit. We can use the healing tide. Our good old friend. Get off of everybody. Okay, we're. I'm still gonna take the mana power again. Things got a little crazy last time. We don't know what this this time is gonna bring us. So, I realized I never have water shield on. So normally when I play, I have a little uh, notification thing that reminds me to put my water shield up. I think I've actually been playing this entire series without water shield. <laughs> I was thinking about my mana, and I'm just like, huh. I never put on my water shield. Well, hey, you know, we're a, we're a new healer too. Yeah, so you can see this tank decides to pull uh, pull this mini boss first. Make sure we get him out of the way. Now, the reason that fighting these both together, well, number one is because he grips everybody in like this. 
And so any sort of mob with uh, like a ground mechanic is just going to roast you. But another reason is because this guy has an aura that increases the physical damage that you take. So although he might not be that scary himself, uh, if you try and fight another mob that does heavy physical damage like this guy over here, may be difficult so one strategy that you can do now that we're talking about these this new affix is you can go around and get all the powers so you see what our tank did here we walked into this area but instead of completing the rest of this area all we did was grab this power and now we're just off to do other stuff and this is good for safety it might not necessarily be good for speed you know because we do have to do a little bit of backtracking but generally speaking as you've seen in these runs if you just you know don't have anything catastrophic happen you'll be able to uh, get through the dungeon and so getting some of the powers earlier means that things will be a bit safer so now we run into this part again i have a feeling our tank isn't going to pull the tormentors with uh the tormentor with the soul guardian but we'll see you never know. We'll, we'll prepare ourselves just in case, you know. One thing you can do here that I don't know if I did last time is actually use Spirit Walker's Grace when you're running through this area. Because we definitely need to get through this area and get out of here. But we can use Spirit Walkers to heal while we're... Uh... Okay, I'm going to do my best to try and save my Spirit Link here. Healing Rain. Cloud Burst. Maybe a little bit of a chain heal. I think we're good now. Let's see what our tank decides. Yeah, so he's pulling the mini boss first. Totally okay with this. As we saw last time, I was mentally prepared for... Uh, Pulling both of them at once, but... So if you notice, I'm kind of trying to like strategically place these Scorching Blasts. I'm standing like way out of the way of the melee, that way we can give ourselves, give our team a little bit more room. Standing like all the way in the corner and stuff, just so no one has to worry about him. Generally speaking, he won't use him on melee unless there's nothing else to use it on so if you're arranged you kind of got to expect that a lot of them are going to go on you okay let's take the haste power again now we're chilling with this guy oh our demon hunter is stuck over there that's funny I'm going to save some stuff for the, the next pull. The next portal guardian seems really scary. And I didn't have enough for that. This time I'll have actually everything. So it should be night and day. Use our purge and get those shields off. And here we go. Yeah, this stuff, this this guy can be scary because this does so much unavoidable damage. There's nothing you can really do here. Except for put down a spirit link, press our ascendance, press our astral shift, just press every single button we have. It's all we can really do against this. We could have pressed Ruby too. We actually didn't even press all the buttons we could have had. We had Ruby and Health Stone and Healing Tide. We had plenty more. But my precise calculations decided that that's exactly what we needed. Generally speaking, Spirit Link and Ascendance will get you through almost any amount of damage. It'd be, it, it would have to be an absurd amount of damage to have to kill you through Spirit Link and Ascendance. Or just, you know, one-shotting. Alright, here we go. I feel like we're making better time than last run. I don't remember exactly where we were, but I'm already feeling better about this run than last. I 
just doing our best to keep our camera clear so we can see those tornadoes. You know, these guys don't really do much except for those tornadoes. So it's important in a lot of situations in WoW where you have to realize, okay, there's one thing that's going to kill me and almost nothing else is going to kill me. And you just need to fully devote your attention to that one thing. We'll do Cap Totem first this time. Speaking of... Drop our healing tide. We'll stop this bone spear. It's not going to be a pretty dangerous one shot. Want to make sure we keep using our dispels. We have our astral shift too if we really need to. Uh oh. Alright, we're, we're living. We're living. A little bit of a scary situation. So we can actually get this checkpoint, and if this warrior doesn't uh, doesn't take the portal, okay, it looks like open. Okay, nice. So he knows now. I just let him know that we got the shortcut. All right, so we have our bloodlust ready. I think we're not going too much faster than last run. But last run it was like uh we were on a razor's edge. Oh also this time we got our we killed one of the mini bosses early. I'm just gonna lust now. You, sometimes I like to wait until this first stun, but uh, our Demon Hunter popped his Metamorphosis and our Warlock popped his Trinket and stuff, so. Yeah, I feel a little bit more confident with this group, uh, just DPSing the boss a little bit. This boss is getting destroyed. We're blasting. We'll use our ascendants here just because uh, lots of damage coming out. Notice I'm grabbing the mana orbs too. My mana is totally fine. Not a big urgency to grab those, but just a good habit to be in. We made short work of this boss. Maybe 10 is just that much easier than 11, huh? Alright, one third of the dungeon down. See where our tank wants to go. You know, I'm not going to pressure him, I'm not going to tell him where to go. Following the lead. Ooh, this can be another pretty tough area on Inspiring. Theater can be a little rough on Inspiring. I'm going to put down a Cap Totem, but it's only going to stun this one guy that's Inspired. I'll kick that guy just in the nick of time. Oh no, another cast. Oh no, my team. I'm gonna drop a spirit link here. Yeah, so you gotta watch for these uh, sludge spewer guys. And they can be annoying because if you have range standing out, they'll jump on the ranged. And they'll, you know, they'll be casting way out in the middle of nowhere. Might not even be on your screen. That's kind of why you can hear that sound cue that I have on that spell. Just for that exact situation when it's hard to see that it's going off.
Oh, I use my interrupts here. Uh, I'm going to try and line of sight this, but I don't think I'm going to get it now. Unlucky. Throw down our tide. It's just about all we have. We do have our uh, astral shift, too. We could have pressed that. Ooh, I did not mean to stand in that. I was trying to grab my mana orb. And I just dipped into that uh, explosion real quick. I need to stand closer. This guy keeps jumping out at me and it's hard for the DPS to kill him. So the next mini boss is over here in this room. Now, it is actually not too bad to skip this guy, but we'll talk about skipping later. I don't know if that's within the uh, the wheelhouse of this series so far. Pulling this guy. This guy's pretty heavy AoE damage. Not super bad at this level, but... You know, we're making sure our AoE healing tools are up. Cloud Burst and Fae Transfusion and stuff. The nice thing about killing this guy is it gives us a lot of room. A lot of room to fight this guy. Sometimes you'll find groups that want to skip one or two of these. And it leaves you with a lot less room to kind of move around when you fight one of them. Oh boy, I'm trying to get off of our poor Warlock. The quaking and all the ground stuff. And uh, we'll take movement speed. And so it, my mindset is I usually almost always take the movement speed on that one because I usually like taking the mana orbs on the other one. And if you have the mana orb power, you don't need the fast eating one. Because, you know, there's not really a point because you don't need to eat that much in a dungeon or drink or whatever. Ooh, this is gonna go off. Unfortunately, can't uh, line of sight that one either. But at least we are sort of like bursting down the important casters or bursting down the inspiring. Or not. Luckily, we can line of sight that one. It's a really good habit for any cast as a healer to get ready to kind of hide behind a wall. Basically any cast, you don't know. You don't know if the cast will go through a wall or not until you try. And it can be a way to mitigate a lot of the damage. All right, so we got a big old pack here. We're kind of all you're already getting ready to press some buttons. I'll just start with the sentence just because I have it. This team got the kick on that guy. Let's see. Making good pace. Optimistic about this run. Use a cap totem to stun some more stuff. This guy's pretty simple. On really, really high levels, he can get a bit scary. But, you know, at this level, it's just a matter of dodging the chains and dodging the swirly. We don't have our bloodlust up, which... Means that we're going quickly, is what it means. Yeah, this guy's pretty straightforward. We're basically just full DPS the whole way.
do a little bit of healing, but a lot of our easy stuff like our Riptide and our Cloud Burst and our Fate Transfusion will take up most of the... Like, things look scary, but, you know, only, a, only one or two big buttons, and then we're chilling again. It can be a little tough on tank. This guy, this guy does do some tank damage, so that is one thing I am trying to do is keep the tank topped. Ooh, our tank got hit. I'm going to put down a uh, spirit link here just to help him out a little bit since he got hit by the chains. I'll use my, my soul shape to get away from the group since we were having a little bit of a, a quaking situation. Unfortunately, we don't have a Necrolord with this group. You do get a really nice versatility buff and movement speed buff when you have a Necrolord, but didn't think to ask. Maybe I should start doing that. We're starting to we're starting to get to the point where we do need to be a little bit more picky, you know. In the in other dungeons, it felt like we could just sort of grab whoever and do whatever, but now, um, you know, we're starting to need we're starting to need whatever we can get to help us. Now we just have this area. This area goes pretty quick, especially because we've already killed one of the mini bosses. We have all four of them. I have a, a weak or a mod that plays a sound for that. I tried to turn a lot of those notification things off and just kind of do it raw for the series, but uh, I have so many that sometimes they they get left and I don't notice them. But I don't think it's too big of a deal. We might, uh, as the series goes on, we might start talking more about UI and that sort of stuff. I'm guessing, I'm guessing the series is going to take uh, two more resets from this one. So this, this week we're trying to get a lot of our 10s done. We'll try and do as many like 10s, 11s and stuff as we can. And then hopefully the next week in the fortified week we can do some 15s. And try and get like half of our KSM or whatever. And then the week after that will be the next Tyran week. And then we'll be able to get... Anyway, we gotta focus here for a second. Ramping for big healing already. Riptides, healing rain. And we're tracking these bleeds that we see. We got a bleed on us, so we're using our uh, astral shift. Once the captain goes down, things aren't too bad, but these archers still do hurt pretty bad, so we're just watching the bleeds. starting to fall behind here we'll drop a healing tide we do have our ascendance too so this uh this mini boss sort of like cleaves off of the tank you can see like it hits the tank and then it's like bouncing to everyone else so it might look like it's only doing you know it's only hitting one guy but it's actually like doing a lot of group damage And nice, so we got all of our enemy forces onto the boss. Oh man, our gear is looking good. Our gear is looking good.
Just gotta dodge the, just gotta dodge this guy. And then dodge the last boss, and we're home free. I think this could be a plus two. I feel like our speed is good enough that this could be a plus two, but I'm not 100% sure. Oh man, these guys are PvPing down there. What is this, man? What are these guys doing? Yo, stop PvPing. We're trying to kill the boss. Monkeys, man. Oh no, our poor demon hunter. Alright, our warlock got a res on him. We still should have more reses available too, so not the end of the world. This boss can go really slow. Just because throughout the whole fight it's sending the uh, sending the DPS players down. I'm just going to press Ascendance here just because it should be up in time for the last boss. And our teammates seem to like to stand and stuff. Same two guys get sent down again. The okay, boss is almost dead. I think we should have like three minutes to do the last boss, which should be plenty with bloodlust and all of our cooldowns. Oops. Alright. If we get a plus two and we end up with a, a plus 12 key out of this, our only hope is that we don't get a plague fall. Ideally, we'd like to get keys that are... Uh... Oops. Ideally, we'd like different keys. For each dungeon just so we can build up our score quick like the best way to get score in mythic plus is to do all the different dungeons because one small upgrade of one doesn't get you too much but a lot of different ones you can kind of see my strategy how diverse i am you know obviously i have this eight and this ten but for the most part i'm just trying to hit every single dungeon as much i can you know if we get a plague fall out of this it'll be a little bit annoying Alright, our team asked me to bloodlust the beginning. Sometimes you'll see teams want to bloodlust like halfway through because the boss gets harder, like 50% in, so, you know, just kill it real quick then. But usually I think it's best to just use it whenever people have cooldowns. Like if everyone's got good stuff to use right away, then you may as well just use bloodlust with that and speed up the boss. Because bloodlust doesn't really help you too much at the end, it's more just, you know, it makes it go faster. You have less chance to die to silly stuff. I will use our defensive and our healing tide here, even though it's not doing any damage. Blasting away at the boss. So we want to stand on the edge and we want to dodge, so... We see this... Oh, boy. That was scary. We have Ascendance in five seconds. We're going to send it right when it's up. We'll use our Spirit Walkers, too, just to make sure we can cast in our Ascendance. We can use Spirit Link for our tank. This is basically the very last hard part of the dungeon, so no reason not to slam every single button there. Oh, jeez. And we did it. And we're praying for a shield. We need a shield. We got a plus two, and our key is... Actually, let's open the chest first. No shield. Oh, yo, you need that shield? Oh, no. The tank said, finally, nice. Dang it. <laughs> His shield is so junk, too. 
<laughs> His shield is just so junk. I, he needs it so bad. Alright, I guess we're not getting it. Thanks for coming. Uh, no shield. And we got a 12 Sanguine Depths. So, not the biggest upgrade, but... This will this will definitely be a this will definitely be a tough one. But here's our here's our damage breakdown again. Mostly lava burst and flame shock. A little bit of AOE, but you can see in that dungeon I wasn't doing too much AOE. Just because a lot of it's single target. Or even if it is multi-target, there's one guy that's like a big mini boss or whatever that's got a lot of health. Here I'll leave the party to not uh bait these guys. Want them to Here's our healing too. You can see here's this power that we took, the stone ward. And this one shield on us ended up doing 6% of our overall healing. So this this stone ward shield power that we get is very, very strong. Very nice in helping keep ourselves alive. So you can see that it's like doing most of the work on ourselves. We almost never need to heal ourselves in between like the passive AoE healing that we have, our racial and our stone ward and stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I'll be releasing regular episodes, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you aren't already, and click the bell to get notified when the next episode is out. I also come out with regular guides for healers in World of Warcraft, as well as videos explaining UI and all other sorts of things. If you enjoy content like this, I'd also highly recommend coming to check out my stream at twitch.tv yummytv where we're always gaming there. The link is in the description, and happy keying.